Uh, let me uh, first uh, try and put self-reliant in uh, perspective. Uh, self-reliant to me means that we should not be at the mercy of any other country to meet our requirements or to grow economically or socially. So self-reliant doesn't mean that we go into a cocoon. It doesn't mean that we don't import anything uh, because if you don't import anything, we probably won't be allowed to export anything and that will isolate us. And the world today is a connected world. Uh, what we need to make sure is that we export more than import. And today, at least in manufactured goods, it's the other way around where we import 25% more than what we export. Uh, and we need to turn that around and export more. Uh, but we certainly should not get into a mindset that India should stop importing completely because there are things that others can do better than we can. And there's no reason for us to be doing things that we are not good at. We should do things that we are good at and become better at things that we are not so good at. And let's not take any sort of uh, ad hoc knee-jerk reaction uh, to self-reliant because it does not mean that we don't import. It just means that we become self-reliant, not depend on others, and gradually increase our export uh, and reduce our import. Okay. If I look at the Indian manufacturing sector, a sector which you proudly represent, there have been only two success stories. One, autos, stroke auto ancillary, and second is pharma. Now, auto is a very complicated sector. Uh, it's a massive management of supply chain, and pharma, again, is a massive management of technology plus supply chain. If India has managed to excel at a global level, both in auto and pharma, how come India, India at a manufacturing level in other basic industries is still suffering? See, uh... One can look at many things, uh, and uh, different people may have different sort of view on it. But my view is very clear uh, that, first of all, the reason auto and pharma have succeeded, that the way they have succeeded, and yes, there are success stories uh, of industries in India, is because there has been a very uh, clear, coordinated effort between the industry and the government, where the government has supported the industry to grow, and industry has invested uh, and has come forward to say, how do we become globally competitive? And it does not happen in one day. Uh, if I go back to auto industry, to the days of when Maruti came in, we were hardly an industry. Uh, and it is over the last 30 or 40 years that we have gotten to a point where we are absolutely what one would define self-reliant. Uh, we probably import as an industry more, no more than 5 to 7% of what goes in our cars. And we export about that much. So we are certainly self-reliant, but it has happened step by step. If I go back to 80s, India didn't have competitiveness at all uh, in terms of making components. And the first step was to just become competitive. Uh, the second step was to bring in technology. The third step was to start exporting. So it all happened in a very plan. And I cannot say that somebody sat down and wrote this down and said this is a strategy. Uh, but certainly if you look back, uh, and if you do a case study of how an industry has really come from nowhere to becoming a global level industry, both for pharma as well as for auto, I think you can write uh, case studies uh, uh, very clearly and demonstrate what has happened. Now, we need to do the same thing for other industries. Uh, and there are some that are coming forward. For example, the mobile industry. Right now, a lot of focus on that, uh, that that's getting towards self-reliance. Uh, but, but there are many other industries that are fragmented where there are no national champions, you do need large players. Of course, you need MSMEs, you need to support MSMEs. But without large players who will lead the way, it is very difficult for the industry to have the complete wherewithal, uh, to have the competitiveness, to have the technology, to have the ability to attract markets, to ability to grow the demand. And government has to work very, very closely. And you will see the departments of government which are very proactive uh, and supporting the industry. Those industries are moving forward uh, and, and doing well. Uh, and, and I'm very happy to see that uh, there's a lot more of that happening today than happening, say, two, three, four years ago. Now, India has a couple of obvious challenges, which is land, labor, high cost of capital, and high taxation. The taxation issue is addressed. But on the other fronts, which is land, labor, and high cost of capital, you think we are nowhere close to what global uh, manufacturing hubs are? So, uh, again, uh, Nikun, this is obviously a very uh, major issue for us to resolve. Because I don't believe that long term uh, we can make Indian manufacturing competitive by imposing uh, tariff barriers or by imposing license. 
long term, we have to be able to be competitive uh, in, in the market. Similarly, export cannot happen uh, in a big way unless we are competitive at the global scale. Now, competitive means two things. Uh, one is cost and second is technology. Uh, if we do not have the technology that is equal to best in the world, we will never be close to best in the world. And that's one area where we have to do a lot of work. Uh, and technology doesn't mean that we have to do it all ourselves. Again, self line doesn't mean that we should do everything ourselves. Technology also can come from outside, can come from joint ventures, can come from licensing, can come from buying, whatever. Uh, so that's, that's one piece. But the second piece uh, that we really need to focus on is the cost competitiveness. Now, we have problems in many areas, uh, which is a cause for it. Some of it, the industry has to fix. Some of it, the government has to come in to help the industry to fix. And I will take the top three or four, and there are many. Uh, number one, I think for India to become cost competitive is the logistic cost and infrastructure, where we are really amongst the sort of, I would say, bottom quartile uh, of all major nations. Uh, the speed at which the cargo can move from point A to point B, especially for import and export, uh, and the cost of moving the cargo in India is amongst the highest. Uh, and that has to come down. We have to really look at the root cause of why that is so and, and, and bring it down. Second area that makes us non-competitive is the cost of industrial power, where overall uh, India is at a weighted average level, perhaps same as most other countries and maybe even lower. But when we look at industrial power, because of cross-subsidy, India is more expensive. And in many goods, power is a significant uh, input cost. And therefore, that makes us non-competitive. The third one, I would say, are taxes. Uh, and, and while uh, we have this scheme called ROT, ROTEP, R-O-D-T-E-P, I think, recently announced a scheme. And that will help us uh, to not import or not export taxes. But it's very important that uh, we don't make our goods more expensive uh, for export because of internal taxes and levies. Of course, taxes and levies have to be there. And government has to earn revenue. But we should not make let that make us non-competitive. So that's sort of what the government has to focus on. But if I come back to industry, the thing that industry needs to do, uh, the biggest problem that we have in why we're not competitive is not having a large scale. If you look at China, China was not built in one day. Uh, China was built over a decade, over two decades, three decades, with a fairly focused approach on building scale. And in manufacturing, uh, by and large, uh, scale you cannot uh, sort of uh, offset uh, in terms of cost competitiveness and india in very few auto is one example pharma is another example where we have scale but in many many industries we do not have scale and therefore industry has to come forward there has to be national champions uh, who will uh, take a leap of faith if i could call it and put in investment to make large scale infrastructure available for any given sector so that's number one number two productivity while we talk about low labor cost on a per hour basis. But I don't think India has reached the level of productivity that one requires uh, to be truly cost competitive. And we need to focus on that. That's the responsibility of the industry. Third is quality. Uh, again, uh, much, much better than what we were 20 years ago. But there are still gaps. And we need to make sure that uh, uh, no good leaving the shores of India ever has any quality defect. And for that, we'll have to raise the standard of quality even for domestic consumption. And if that comes up, automatically the export quality will go up. And finally, technology that I talked about earlier, which government cannot give us. It has to be done by the industry, and we have to make it happen. So what you can see is that it's not you flip a switch and you will become manufacturing nation. It's something where we have to sit down, uh, the industry and the government, say what are the gaps, what do we need to do, and how do we come together? Uh, industry should not sort of go with the uh, hands and say, you do this, you do this, you do this. It has to be a joint effort where government industry have to sit down each sector one at a time. There is no silver bullet. Each sector one at a time, even sub-sector one at a time and see what do I need to do to make Indian manufacturing competitive globally so that we don't have to import and we can export both. Hmm. Let's look at US. Uh, Jock, uh, Jack Welch use the whole concept of outsourcing because he wanted the American labor productivity to go higher. Do you think India should also focus on that rather than focusing on creating mass employment and trying to, you know, bring manufacturing back into India into categories like agri, furniture, and other cheap products? We should focus on automation and self-reliant in a different way like Europe has done. So I think India's requirements, in my view, Nikon, are different uh, than what US had uh, at that point of time. Uh, 
to for india one of the biggest uh, concern has to be long term concern has to be create uh, create creation of jobs employment and the reason I'm, i say that is that every month i think the statistics is 1 million more jobs are required in india and that's a lot of jobs to be created that is number one but the second bigger challenge is that agriculture is supporting 40 45% of indians today and agriculture economy can never be large enough to give prosperity to 40 45% of indians and therefore lesser number of people have to depend on agriculture and when they lesser number depend on agriculture they will need jobs somewhere else so our need for jobs is much more uh, in the long term than 1 million jobs per month and therefore as we look at manufacturing growth we have to focus on the industries that will create employment uh, and that is to be a number one priority and not just create employment but create employment in semi urban and rural areas because urban migration as we have seen now with covid-19 is not is not sustainable we have to create jobs in semi urban and uh, rural areas and for that we have to pick those industries to support and grow manufacturing industries where such jobs will be created let's talk about uh, agriculture mention the numbers that uh, how much of population is dependent on agriculture but one would argue that agriculture is one sector where the government control is perhaps the highest at every level at a time when uh, most of the countries are now trying to be self reliant in food security because of the covid crisis i hope even our country like us is trying to do that do you think this is a low hanging fruit when i say literally fruit to be plucked uh so so let me let me let me say yes or no uh, first of all i'm very happy to see the way the government in the recent announcements that were done by the honorable finance minister is beginning to decontrol agriculture all right and and letting the farmers uh, earn higher revenue uh, putting the investment into the farm gate infrastructure a very positive putting investment into say animal husbandry putting investment into fisheries very focused uh, and if all of the things that are announced in agriculture are done in true letter and spirit i think it can transform indian agriculture i have no doubt about that but the problem is that if you transform indian agriculture and if you double the output that doesn't mean that farmers will become rich what that means is the prices will crash right so if you're going to double the output which can happen doubling the output in india is not very difficult because our productivity today is very low and with some intervention by government some intervention by corporates uh, some kind of uh, uh, you know uh, make, having larger farms uh, using technology uh, using uh, equipment we can easily double the output but that does not help because that will like i said Uh, prices will rise therefore if you were to double the output you have to significantly increase export in agriculture and agriculture export as you know is always politically sensitive thing for every country uh, for every country because farmers lobby in every country will uh, will will uh, create a hue and cry if their uh, uh, rosy roti is hurt uh, and therefore the, the the thing to focus on in agriculture in my view humble view and i am not an expert in this is to uh, focus on food processing the food processing is the big opportunity in india huge opportunity in india uh, and and if we can really focus on food processing and make processed food export then i think the farmers benefit uh, we are, will then be able to increase the uh, output uh, benefit the farmer uh, and processing will create manufacturing jobs but i'm very happy to say nikunj that in the last 3 4 5 months i'm seeing a significant activity and interest serious interest uh, on the side of the government to look at all of these things that we are talking about today uh, that kind of dialogue that the industry has had with the government in the last 3 4 months in my 26 years of working in india uh, i have not seen that before and the time of kind of time that the senior ministers are investing in understanding the industry's uh, sort of uh, views on each of these things is again something that has never happened before perhaps it's because of covid 19 we are all at home and therefore it's easier to talk and everybody has more time less travel nobody is going anywhere so that allows that but all the same uh, we are having very serious dialogue in many sectors uh, with with the government industry is delighted uh, with the kind of attention that manufacturing is getting today and i think if something has to happen it has to happen in the next 9 to 12 months if we do not transform manufacturing in india uh 
including uh, the food processing which comes from agriculture. So yeah, I went a little bit off, off track. But if you don't transform uh, manufacturing India in the next six to 12 months, we never would. This is the opportunity for us to do it. Uh, the time is right because there is a little bit of anti-China uh, feeling all around the world. The companies want to come out of China, but we have to attract them to India. Them going out of China doesn't mean coming to India. Uh, we have to attract them to India. And for that, a lot of things have to be done and everything is known. It's just a matter of now, how do we make it happen? How does the industry come forward? How does the government come forward, both state and uh, central government, and, and, and make it happen? I don't think India has had an opportunity for manufacturing like what we have today. Okay. So final question, you know, you are one group which in a sense has a very deep understanding of software, manufacturing, consumer, hospitality. Last uh, 15, 20 years, every Indian group has become outward looking. They've gone global. Would you say, just to put it very, uh, you know, big picture scenario, it is time to become inward looking. And when you have to invest right now, you would be investing in more Atman Irmar and inward looking businesses? I don't think Nikon it's either or. Uh, I think it's both. Uh, like I started off by saying that we should not become isolated. Uh, okay, we should not become isolated. America didn't become great by being isolated, right? America, in fact, opened its border uh, for trade um, before most other countries did. Uh, so, so, so Indian companies have enough appetite to be able to invest in India and to be able to grow, uh, grow globally. The respect for India will come, or Indian business will come, not just because they become big in India, but because they become big globally, right? The respect for products will come not because we can sell in India, but because we can sell globally. Respect for brands will come not because we are a well-known brand in India, but because we are a well-known brand globally. When will be the day when somebody will go to a, 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 a store in US and buy a piece of uh, furniture, not because it is the lowest cost furniture, but because it is made in India? Why will buy a garment not because it is 10 pesa cheaper, but because it is made in India? That's the kind of brand development that we have to do. So I think if you are inward looking, that will never happen. We have to be focused on on on, on being global, uh, and 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 there's nothing like a market that is protected from the globe. Um, there's a wave right now where everybody thinks that yes, okay, we let's seal our borders. That's not that's not the future. Though. I mean, it might it'll go away. We have to become strong. Uh, we have to become competitive and have a compelling story on why we don't need to import and why we should be able to export. Uh, it cannot be about rhetorics. It cannot be about uh, uh, being nationalistic only. Uh, but I would I would say one thing. Sorry, uh, that there is a responsibility that businesses have uh, in reducing import. Uh, because businesses tend to import from wherever they can find something cheapest uh, for their input, for their input. I think businesses also have to look at long term and be willing to pay a small premium, uh, not a large premium, but a small premium uh, for buying local, provided there is no compromise in quality and there's no compromise in technology or functionality, right? And, and, and I see that in many countries, in Korea, uh, in Japan, uh, they would never, in Germany even, I mean, they would tend to buy local for business to business, I'm saying, not B2C, uh, unless they have to go out. And in India, we have a tendency to go out at the, at the, at the sort of a flip of a, uh, a coin or whatever. Uh, and and we, need to, we need to try and one part of self-reliance is, is that. And I'll take AC as an example, air conditioners, room air conditioners. Today, uh, it's a 25,000 crore industry. Uh, but the value addition that happens in India, my guess is only about 4,000 crore or so. 25% of air conditioners that are sold in India are imported, mostly from Thailand. And even the ones that are made in India, about 75 to 80% value addition happens outside India. That means we are doing only about 25% of 75%. Now, here, if the air conditioning industry come together and say, look, why do I need to import compressor, the circuit board, the controller, the aluminum pipes or copper pipes? We can do all of this in India. Let's come together and see how do we set up in India. And I can immediately overnight almost 
we can increase 12, 13,000, 15,000 crore of value addition in India. That's the kind of role the businesses have to play on how do we become more self-reliant? Because if it remains sort of uh, uh, distributed in our demand uh, and 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 uh, divided, then it'll never happen. Auto industry has done that well. I must I I, I must say that, that that because see the auto OEMs again come together and help to develop scales where supplier can invest in this and and make it happen. There are some there, there are many many things uh, uh, that need to be done. Uh, to make it happen but again i repeat that i think the time is right i've never seen such an opportunity uh, in the last 15 20 years to grow manufacturing